In today's video, we'll be creating this simple game using the Julia programming language and the jewelgame.jl library. This tutorial is aimed at upper beginner to lower intermediate programmers and game developers. We'll start by installing Julia in Visual Studio Code, and I'll introduce you to the Jewel Game Editor. What's Julia and why should you care? Julia is a high performance programming language that has some potential for game development, as it can be as fast as C and as easy to use as Python. If you're looking for a language that combines powerful features with a user-friendly experience, this tutorial may interest you. Just a heads up, Jewel Game is an early stage project which I am developing myself. There will be some bugs and things are rough around the edges right now, but if that doesn't matter to you, then let's get into it. So there's going to be a few prerequisites we're going to install. The first one will be the Julia programming language. So we'll go to julialang.org and go to download. Copy this command, open command prompt, paste it, and then we'll agree. And then let's Google search Jewel Game, J U L G A M E dot J L. Then go to releases, v0.1.0, and then scroll to the bottom and then look for Jewel Game Editor, and then download that. Next, you'll go to back to my profile and go to repositories, and there's Jewel Game Tutorial. And then go to code, and then download zip. And then download that. It looks like Julia has been installed, so let's just check type Julia, and it looks like it's, it's been installed, so great. Next, we'll want to get VS Code. We'll just download that, accept everything without looking. Okay, so we have VS Code open here. Let's go to extensions, so type in Julia, and you'll want to download Julia for Julia language support here. Just to make this easy, look, we're just going to do this all on our desktop. So let's get uh, Jewel Game set up with our project. We want to extract the project files. Then we want to extract the editor. So we've got the, the editor extracted. Let's go back to VS Code and get set up with our Julia project. I actually have some stuff open, so I'm going to open the one we had open. And then let's do, um, let's open our folder. Let's go to where we created our. Uh, tutorial folder and then open that up and then preferably when we open at the folder we open at this platform folder and then select it boom and then trust me please and now we can look into source scenes uh, assets and kind of look at this this layout we've opened the platform project and I want to talk about the file structure here so let's start from the top so we have assets so fonts images, sounds. We have a font here that's already in here. We have a couple of images that um, I've already loaded in. And we have some sounds that I've loaded in. And the engine will, if we're trying to load these things, they will look specifically in these folders, in this exact structure and their subfolders. So if there's folders inside of here, we can actually organize it. But for now, everything's just kind of thrown out here. We have our scenes, so that's where we put together all of our entities and, and things that go you see on the screen when, when you're playing a game. We have our scripts. There's nothing in here right now, but this is where we write our user scripts. So this is where you will write a script uh, for the gameplay. And then source, we have platformer, which needs to be the same as its parent, parent, its parent folder. Um, so it's grandparent folder here. It'll need to be the same name and run, and this is all in the project for you already, and run, this will make it easy to actually run a game from the command line. So I'm kind of messing around here in the command line already, um, but let me actually clear it out so it's easier. So when you open a fresh command line, we can cd into uh, source, oh, cd source, and Let's say I try to use this uh, this run file because we can run Julia files with Julia and then the file name, Julia run. Oh, there's an error. What's the error? 
oh, we don't have dual game installed because if we look in platformer, we try to use this uh, user package dual game. So all we'll need to do for the for the sake of this tutorial is we'll need to open the Julia command line, the REPL. Um, we'll press, press the right bracket and that will open our package manager command line, I guess. And we can just say add uh, all lowercase and then dual game. And it's gotta be, it's gotta match the case. So capital J, capital G, and then press enter. And this will search the uh, public registry and install the package. So the latest V0.1.0 package. And we'll give that a second to finish. All right, looks like it finished. So then we can press backspace and that'll take us back to the regular ripple and then type in exit with uh, open and close parentheses and that'll close that. And then now if we try Julia run.jl, now it should open a window, but there's nothing there, right? Because we have not done anything. So, but this is good. We got a window open. It's all black, but we're going to change that. Let's go back to our file explorer and we have our editor open. We'll go to bin, dual game editor. So now that we got set up, I'm going to go through every part of this editor and kind of give you a clue on, on what things do. So I'll, I guess I'll start from easiest and go to most complex. So the simplest is controls. So this is literally just text here um, and it gives you kind of some controls we can do, some shortcuts we can do in the editor uh, to kind of navigate scenes. And so we have pan scene, select entity, move entity, duplicate entity, duplicate entity, brush. Um, so that's a pretty useful tool. We'll talk about that later. Debug, um, that will be some if any exceptions come up. This will be more helpful for me, probably not as much for you. Um, sometimes it's helpful helpful for you, but usually it's going to be like an engine bug that's going to be popping up here, which is not great. But this is why I have it here, because then I can, I can get some information from people who use this. So then we'll go to the scene list. So... Let's go to file. Um, we can we can actually create a new Julia project. I haven't tried it lately, but I'm sure it still works. So let's go ahead and open a scene. So we'll go to open project. Yes, um, I just previously opened the wrong project because I already had this downloaded. So I'm gonna go to my desktop, go to Julia tutorial, and then platformer, and then we'll open this config.julgame file. That's what it's looking for. It's a dot jewel game extension. Um, so now we have our our scene in this scene list, and that's basically going to show all the scenes in the scene folder um, in our project. So let's open it up. We have a black screen, which is exactly what we're expecting. If we go to um, down here, we look at, these are our config files, um, or this is a config file and this is a camera uh, config. So just to show the project config real quick, this is what the project's going to look like um, when it's actually built out. Um, and then, so we had our width, height, frame rate, window name, uh, pixels per unit, that's slightly, that's more of like in the actual game, not just the window. Um, auto scale zoom is resizable, full screen. Um, let's just kind of toggle full screen. And then, so I saved the config. And what should happen is once I go back here and I run the game, it's full screen, and that's why we're, our screen's black. So that is good. Let's uh, let, now let's go to the camera, and let's play with this a little bit. So we look at the scene. This is what our this is kind of like our uh, our general like scene view. That's like not necessarily what we'll see when it's actually built out. But this game view tries to get closer to to that. So right now our camera dimensions are 500 by 500. That's why it's like a square here. Um, our position zero zero, which does like we're not going to be able to tell anything without any anything on the scene yet. Um, and then we have offset offsets, um, starting coordinates. Um, those don't really matter as much. Also, there's a color widget here for the background, and currently it's not working. But by the time we actually get into working on this, I'll have I'll have this bug fixed and. You shouldn't see any issues with the with the editor. So let's 
actually add some things to our scene. We have our hierarchy here. This has our list of entities. This has our UI elements as well. And then so like, let's say I create a new text box. And then I see it here. I can see it in my scene. This is what it's actually going to look like. Um, and then let's say I can hit Control S or I go up to scene and hit save. That saves my scene. Then I go and run this. I see my text box. And if I click UI Inspector, open my UI Inspector, and then I open my text box, I can actually modify my text box. So I can modify the font size, which will probably make it look clearer when the, when the window size increases. Um, I can modify its position as long as is centered X and is centered Y are not checked. So if I do something like this, is centered X, I can move it in the Y direction. If I try to change it to the X, it's not gonna do anything, but if I remove that, it should be good. And let's say I move it here and then I'm like, oh, I want it centered. It'll just recenter it, recenter it, boom. And then we can also change the alpha here. That's pretty straightforward. Text, text, text boxes aren't super um, modifiable yet. They're not nothing crazy right now. We can also add screen buttons. Um, I'm not gonna get too too much into that uh, because I don't know. I don't think they're fully ready yet. And then we can add entities. So um, now there is an entity in the scene, in the scene, and we can see it here. And we can, to this entity, we can, there's a lot of things we can add. Um, we have some components here. Um, we can add a shape, let's add a shape. And so that'll, by default, make that shape red. Um, we don't have a nice color picker for this quite yet, but we can add um, RGB values and update the color of it. And then we can see it in our game. So let's save that and then open up our project. And our scene loads, and we have a cube and a text box. As much as I want to kind of go through and kind of talk about every component, I think it makes more, much more sense to do this stuff in context because I think a lot of that will be lost if I'm just kind of talking about it in isolated, isolated examples. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a little bit of a little bit of a demo here of kind of our physics and collisions. So. Let's add a collider to our shape. And then we can, let's go in our scene. And then we can click, hit Control D. And then I'm holding left control and just dragging this down. And then let's make sure it stays in our game view. So it's still in our game view. And what I'm going to do is for the topmost item, I'm going to add a rigid body. So I add a rigid body and that should fall down and collide onto the this item. So the last cool thing I'll show you about this editor is I've been going back and forth between this view and the this editor here. We don't necessarily have to do that. Sometimes it's advantageous to do that, but we can go to scene play pause scene and then are you sure you want to start and stop the game yes boom and then our scene starts and it says at the top of the window it says playing that's the only indicator i have right now but it's really hard to tell that you're playing if you're not paying attention um, especially if you don't have a lot of moving things on the scene but if i go back play pause scene and it gives you this because um it wants to warn you uh basically if you're starting the scene it wants to warn you that it's going to basically erase any changes you have made and you haven't saved because what it'll do is it'll re it'll go back and read that file again, the latest changes you've made to that file uh, for your scene. And it'll go and restore the scene state to that. You, as you can see, it'll return that top square up here. So 
I think this was a pretty good um, introduction to the editor, kind of give you a feel for it, get you set up with it. In the next video, we'll actually start building the scene out and creating some gameplay.